in this video, we're going to go through strong and weak acids and bases. And what I've done here is draw out three examples of what we're going to call acid dissociation reactions. Acid dissociation reactions because it's going to give us one equivalent of acid, which is H plus, and another equivalent of a conjugate base, which is what's going to be left over. So if you notice each three re each of these three reactions, we get H plus. This is all the same. And the identity of the conjugate base here is different. Different. Interesting. Now, how do we tell these reactions apart? Well, we can actually measure how well each of these reactions is going to work or how far it proceeds to give product, not by looking at it, unfortunately. But in chemistry, we have to get our hands dirty. We actually have to do the experiments. And through measurement, through measurement, we can actually measure how well each of these three reactions proceeds. If we're given a certain amount of starting material, we can see how much of our product we get. And it turns out, as we do the measurements of these reactions, that this is, of these three reactions, this is the most favorable, the most likely to give H plus and Cl minus. And of all of these reactions, this is the least favorable. So the least likely to give these two products, H plus and CH3 minus. Which is interesting because like I said, all we're really changing here is the identity of the conjugate base. That's the really only thing that's changing. We're, only, well, we're keeping H plus the same all, all the while. So we can kind of look at it, each of these reactions, like I said, kind of imagine that sort of proceeding slightly most to the right, little bit to the right, and least to the right. Now, what does this tell us? If each of these conjugate bases is different, and this is the most favorable, if this is the most favorable reaction, this must also be telling us this is the most stable of each of these products. This is the most stable. And this must be the least stable because it's the least likely to, to form as a product. This is um, one of the things we can think about uh, as we look at this reaction. Now, knowing that this is the most stable and knowing that this is the least stable also leads us to think about a, another factor, and that is that remember what are, we defined an acid as. We defined an acid as something which was able to donate H+. So something that's able to donate, the extent to which something can donate H plus is a measure of its acidity. So the fact that this reaction goes furthest to the right, so furthest to the right, so it's the best proton donor, we're gonna, we can actually say a different way of expressing the best proton donor is this is the strongest acid. This is the strongest acid. And if this is the worst proton donor, then this must be the weakest acid. Okay? Strongest acid, weakest acid, most stable conjugate base, least stable conjugate base. Now, I'm kind of omitting something here so far. So far, I've only talked about the reaction going from left to right. We haven't talked about the reaction going in the opposite direction because these reactions are actually reversible. These reactions are equilibria. So just like we can have acid dissociation go from left to right, we can have association, or I guess base association, go from right to left. So we could have our base reacting with our acid to give us HCl. And in this sense, it would act as a base. And because this reaction proceeds the furthest to completion, we know this through measurement, this is the least, this is the least favorable uh, base. This is the least or the weakest base. It's the weakest base because it's the least likely to go from right to left. It's least likely to act as a base. 
And going somewhat further along, we can have H plus and OH minus. This is going to be slightly more favorable. In fact, it's actually significantly more favorable, um, where the OH can associate with H plus to give water. And of all of these three, CH3 minus associating with H plus to go from right to left is the most favorable. So this is actually the strongest base. This is the strongest base. So isn't this kind of interesting? When you look at things, see that we have a strong acid. It's giving us a weak base, which is the most stable. We have a weak acid giving us a very unstable base, which is the strongest base. So you see how acidity and basicity are related? So we can actually write this out. This is one of the key rules for acidity and basicity. The stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. And you can actually rub this out. And we could actually be a little bit even more detailed. We can even say the weaker. So for something that has a weak acid, so as methane does, the weaker the acid, see how the conjugate base here is the strongest base? The stronger the conjugate base. So basicity, maybe I should use a different color here. So weakest base, strongest base. And over here on the left, maybe we'll, so strongest acid, and this is our well, weakest acid. Okay, so that's how acidity and basicity are related. The stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base, because basicity is inversely proportional to stability. Okay, so the more stable your, your conjugate base is, the weaker a base it is and vice versa. So stability you can kind of think of as being, um, the, like I said, the inverse of basicity. So some students think, oh, it's a strong acid, it's got to be a weak base. That's not true. Strong acid, there's, so if something's a weak acid, it's not necessarily a strong base, but it's con because here CH4 cannot, is, this is not a base. There's no lone pairs. But its conjugate base is very strong. So just one thing to keep in mind, make sure you, you don't make that mistake, that the stronger the acid, the, con the, the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base, the weaker the acid, the stronger conjugate base, and that rule will always hold. And that's why it's useful to know how acidity and basicity are related.